All right, we're going to go ahead and get started. Thanks everybody for meeting us here on this Monday morning. I'm Becky Wallen. I'm the Field to Fork Coordinator for the Kentucky Department of Fish and Wildlife Resources. And this is Travis Smith. He's an aquatic education staff member here at Fish and Wildlife. Today we're going to be talking to you about shotguns and how to get you prepped and your shotgun prepped for the upcoming turkey season. So let's go ahead. We're going to start with a couple of safety the um, rules when you're handling a firearm that you always want to follow. First, you're going to treat every firearm as if it's loaded at all times. This is the golden rule for firearm safety, to treat every firearm as if it's loaded. And that means we're going to keep the muzzle pointed in a safe direction at all times. You want to be aware of who and what is around you when you have your firearm out there and you're practicing with it. And you also want to know what's beyond your target when you set up to practice shooting. So let's start by looking at the parts of a firearm, the parts of a shotgun. We're going to start down here at the bottom. We've got the stock right here. That's this brown piece here. And this is a good placement for your hand to rest. It keeps your fingers off the trigger and outside of the trigger guard, which is going to keep you safe. We then have the safety, which is a push button safety on this firearm. Not all safeties are the same. Make sure you ask someone or um, look at your owner's manual when you're trying to figure out the safety on your, on your shotgun. Then we've got the chamber. The chamber on this shotgun is open so that we can quickly look at it and see that it's unloaded and it's safe. Then the foregrip here, this is going to be really important later when we talk about aiming and shooting. The tubular magazine sticks out of the foregrip right here. This is where your ammunition is going to be stored before you shoot. And then, of course, the barrel of the firearm. And I want to point out two main components of the barrel. The very top is called the muzzle, and the inside is called the bore. I'm going to bring up this terminology, terminology later. That's why I wanted to show you to, right now. And the last piece of our shotgun is the bead sight right on top of the barrel right at the muzzle. I've got some popular shotgun actions that I wanted to show you guys today. The first one that Travis is holding is a pump action shotgun. And that means that you manually close the action by pushing the foregrip forward and opening it by pulling it back. You have to do this on a pump action shotgun every time that you fire. This is a really popular style action type for a lot of beginners because you're in control of everything on your own. The next action type that we brought today is the semi-automatic. And so the main difference between the semi-automatic shotgun and the pump action is that you only have to manually load the first shell. The, after you pull the trigger, the next, that spent shell is kicked out, the next round is automatically loaded, and you're ready to go. So if you want to demonstrate that. All right. And the last action type that we have today is the break action. And you can tell why it's called the break action, because it hinges right here at the back of the barrel and opens up that action at the back of the barrel here where you load your ammunition. Awesome. So something that's really important to know about shotguns before you get out in your um, turkey hunting is gauge. So what is gauge? Gauge is determined by the number of lead balls that are the same size of the bore, remember the inside of the barrel, that it takes to weigh one pound. For example, on our 20 gauge shotgun, it would take 20 lead balls that are the same size as the barrel to weigh one pound. This is really important for turkey season because there are laws that restrict which, what size gauge you can use. You can go all the way as small as a 410, which we actually have here, and you can see how small these barrels are. And you can go as big as a 10 gauge, which we don't have an example of, but that's one step above the 12 gauge that we have here. So to be legal in Kentucky, as small as a 410 shotgun all the way up to a 10 gauge. All right. Now let's talk about something that's um, incorporated into the muzzle of the barrel, which we call the choke. 
We've got some examples here. These chokes are manually inserted into the muzzle of the gun, and there are all different variations of chokes. What a choke does is it constricts the pattern, it controls how far the spread of your pellets go, and how far of a distance they travel. So you could have something as open as a cylinder choke that has no restriction at all, and as tight as a super full turkey choke that has a super tight constriction, keeps that pattern really dense in the center, and allows it to travel just a little bit farther. Some firearms have the choke already built in. How do you know if it's in there, and what size choke is it? It's going to be stamped on the barrel. There's a lot of information that we can get off of the firearm that's in that stamp, and I'll be pointing out a couple more pieces of information later. So you can tell that if you have the firearm where you can install different variations, different chokes, then it's going to be um, a very functional firearm that you can use for multiple different species and multiple different types of target practice. All right, we're going to dive into ammunition now. So the basic components of a shotgun shell, you've got the primer that's in the very back. This is what the firing pin is going to strike, and it's going to ignite the powder that sits right on top. And that is going to push the wad that separates the powder from the pellets out the end of the gun. There are all different kinds of ammunition for shotguns. We've got, if you want to grab these here, Travis. There are different lengths of shells. There are two and three quarter inch shells. Awesome. Uh, three inch shells and three and a half inch shells. So as the shell is longer, you've got some more powder in the shell and more power behind it. You want to make sure that your firearm can handle the longer shells. That's another thing, a piece of information that's going to be on the barrel stamp is if the firearm can actually shoot long shells. Now let's talk about the, the pellets, the BBs inside the shotgun shell. We've got some examples today. These, are also, these also come in a lot of different sizes. For example, we have some smaller shot, like this number eight shot here. You can see how small, oops, some of those pellets are. And then we've got something bigger, like this number four shot. And why is this important to know for turkey season? In Kentucky, you can legally hunt turkeys with shot that is number four or smaller. And now there's kind of a trick here. Notice that the bigger the number, the smaller the pellet the more pellets are going to be in your shotgun shell. So just remember in Kentucky, number four shot or smaller is legal to hunt with for turkeys. Do we have any questions so far? All right, we're going to keep rolling. Now let's talk about some preparations that are specific to turkey hunting in, um, with your firearm. So the first thing that's super duper important is the plug. What does that mean? So remember the tubular magazine. That's pretty long, and you might guess that it can fit maybe five or six shotgun shells. But in Kentucky, legally, you can only have three shotgun shells in your entire firearm in, um, while you're hunting for turkeys in Kentucky. So we plug it, and we use things you can buy manufactured plugs. These fit inside of the tubular magazine and prevent extra rounds from being loaded into it. You can also make one at home, but you gotta make sure that it is the correct length and that it will prevent extra shells from being loaded. So we're gonna check this firearm, Travis. See if you can get four shells into the gun. So we've got one in the chamber, Now we've got two in the firearm, three in the firearm, and we can't fit the fourth shell. And that shows us that this firearm is plugged and that we're legal to start hunting turkeys in Kentucky. 
If you want to check to make sure that your firearm is plugged at home, I recommend that you disassemble it and try to see if you can find the plug and if you don't see it, that's when you would put it in. Okay, we're going to do an activity together. So, everybody get ready. You can look at me or you can find a clock or a picture on the wall, but we're going to check for eye dominance. So what we're going to do is put our hands together and make a small circle between our thumbs. Now, go ahead and look at me and keep looking at me. Lock your elbows and slowly bring your hands up and continue looking at me. Now, slowly bring your hands to your face and you probably landed on one side or the other that you can see out of. The eye that you can still see out of is your dominant eye. So drop in the comments what your dominant eye is and maybe you've been surprised. If you, when you um, figure out which eye is dominant, I, that's the side that I recommend you start practicing with. Um, now you may be kind of awkward like me where I'm right-handed but I was left eye dominant and it can feel awkward at first to shoot on that left side, but you'll be more accurate if you can use that dominant eye. And you might be lucky enough to have landed right in the middle of your nose. That means that you have co-dominant vision, and good for you, you can probably shoot on either side accurately. All right, let's talk about sight picture. So when you look down the firearm, what do you want to see to make sure that you're aiming correctly? So let's pretend that the very top of this cardboard, this flat piece, is the barrel. And this is our front bead sight, remember? So if you are aiming correctly, your barrel is very flat and your bead is perched right on top. If you're aiming too low, you're only going to see half of the bead or none of it at all. But if you're aiming too high, you're going to see some of your barrel and the bead is going to be way up. So just make sure that the barrel is super flat and that the bead is perched right on top. Then you know you're on target. Now Travis is going to demonstrate some fundamentals on how to hold your firearm to make sure that you can get the shot on paper. So first things first, there is a pocket under your shoulder that you got to open up and you're going to do that by sticking your arm out on that dominant side like a chicken wing. So Travis has opened up that pocket and he's put the stock right in there and now he's going to bring the stock to his cheek. You see that he's not crouched over the firearm. He actually brought it all the way up to his cheek and he's going to glue his cheek to the stock. You want to keep your face glued to the stock until you have, you have shot and you've followed through with your shot um, and then at that point you can take the firearm down. He's got really good control of his fingers, keeping his fingers off the trigger and outside the trigger guard. And he's, the last point that, um, the last fundamental that he can do to make sure that he's accurate is give that foregrip a good squeeze and push the gun into his shoulder. If you can lo lock down these fundamentals, you'll be on target. Awesome. Okay, we're going to dive into patterning. Patterning is um, very important before you go out to tur a turkey hunt because it's going to help you be an accurate shooter and it's going to help you determine the maximum range that you can take a turkey ethically. So what you're doing when you're patterning, you're getting your firearm ready by exploring different types of ammunition, different brands of ammunition, uh, different shot size, so the pellets, uh, different chokes, and what you're trying to, uh, your goal is to get at least eight pellets in the vital area of your target species. For turkeys, the, let's see here, the, um, where you're going to aim is right where the feathers meet the neck, and you want a really tight pattern there. So you can tell on our target here, we took one shot here and then we used the same firearm and we had switched the shot size. Remember the size of the pellets? That's all we changed. And you can tell how different these two targets are. And that the first shot would be better suited for turkey hunting because there's more shot in the vital area of that target. 
One quick tip. When you see a big Tom or a nice looking Jake out there and he's strutting around and he's ready to go, they tend to stick their neck in and pin it to their body. You want to wait until they stretch out and look up so that it is exposing that neck because if you shoot when they're pinned, when they have their head pinned back, you take a chance on shooting the meat. And that's why we're out there turkey hunting, to get the meat to bring it home and eat because it's super good. Do we have some questions? Sure do. Luke H8 wants to know what is the biggest gauge you can use? For turkey hunting, the biggest gauge that you can use is a 10 gauge shotgun. Are there any bigger than 10 gauge? There are bigger gauges than 10 gauge shotguns, but they are not legal for turkey hunting in Kentucky. Alex wants to know what is your favorite type of shot, shotgun to use? My favorite type of shotgun is a 20 gauge shotgun. Um, I really love this firearm. It looks a lot like this one. It fits me really well, and it gets the job done when we're out there in the field. And it's lightweight, which uh, is great when I'm out hunting. It doesn't weigh me down. And then one more. Okay. Chase wants to know, are there options to help you with the gun weight or length? There are options. So there are different, um, styles of shotguns that they're different they're called different grades and the best choice for turkey hunting or for hunting in general is going to be your field grade shotgun that's going to be a little bit lighter weight it's made for hunting so it's kind of um, scratch and dent it's okay with being out in the field um, and the the composite stocks you can see here this is what we refer to as composite, the plastic is typically going to be a little bit lighter weight than a wooden stock like you would see here. Another thing about the field grade shotguns is that the barrel is going to be a little bit shorter which is going to reduce the weight as well. All right, let's move on. We've got some videos for you today to, to demonstrate patterning. And Travis is going to get them pulled up really quick. So this is the first target that we wanted to demonstrate with. You can tell he took the shot, he's unloading, putting the safety back on, very important. And then we wanted to test what would happen if we used a different choke. So the first choke that we used was called a modified. It's somewhere in the middle of uh, restricted um, on, the, on the end of the barrel. So we moved up to our turkey choke, which is more restricted. We wanted to see what the difference would be on paper. So that's, you can see there, he's putting the turkey choke into the shotgun. Another thing I'd like to point out in this video is that you can see our blind and that he's kind of sitting on the ground in his turkey chair. So we want to practice in a hunt scenario. That way, because it's very different from shooting standing and then sitting on the ground. So we're going to get our second video up here. This is the shot we took with the turkey choke. He's loading into the pump action. Took the shot and I know it's a little bit hard to see, so we actually have our targets that we practiced with here. And right away, you're going to be able to tell that the turkey choke, which was the second target, has a tighter pattern and there are more pellets in the vitals of the turkey. All right, any more questions? All right, I just want to thank you all for joining me today. Come back tomorrow. They're going to have another selection for you. And if you have more questions that didn't get answered, put them in the comments. I'm going to be checking it out later. Thank you all.